the run. Can Nebraska stop Missouri's rushing attack? Or can Missouri stop Nebraska? Or can Nebraska get their offense back on track? Defense is going to be key to this ball game. Nebraska's defense last week set up two touchdowns for the Cornhuskers. Missouri struggled against the run. So if Nebraska can get their running game going, I think Nebraska will win this ball game. All right. Now, do you think the off-the-field distractions are going to be a problem for Nebraska today? Yeah. All the changes. Well, there has been a lot of changes. You know, this, this D'Angelo Evans thing not coming back. Trust me, there's a lot more to this situation than just a player saying he doesn't want to play and come back a week later. There's some turmoil there in Lincoln, Nebraska. Can they put this to the side and focus on the Missouri Tigers? We're about to find out. Well, indeed, we will find out. Do you think your Tigers can win? I think they've got a very good chance that they can run that football on a consistent basis. All right. Of course, they come in with a huge rushing attack, but but the question will be, does it have to be the Nebraska defense that comes up big and saves the offense, which has been a little crazy lately and with all the changes? Eric Crouch starting a quarterback. Right now, let's get you out for this game. Ron Thulin and Artie Gigantino taking care of business in Columbia. The following is a special presentation of Fox Sports Net. Today, it's a Big 12 Conference Primetime Smorgasbord. Pick your poison. If you like hard-hitting defense, take a bite of Nebraska. If running and gunning are more to your taste buds, then that Tiger offense is just right for you. Whatever your desire, Nebraska and Missouri is the big ticket matchup of the day. Both these teams come into battle undefeated. Sixth-ranked Nebraska is 20-0 against Missouri, but that was the old Tigers. This new animal is of a different stripe. They can run, they can gun, and they love to score, score, score. Two teams enter, one team leaves, undefeated. Then, a Pac-10 nighttime extravagant football action continues on Fox Sports Net. team in the NCAA but they're going against the number two rush defense in the country and once again that Nebraska defense looks like the Nebraska defense of old they're playing great defense this year they've been suffocating their opponents they've got a lot of stars on this defense but the heart and soul of it is number 13 inside linebacker the middle linebacker Carlos Polk watch him tonight he runs around wherever the football is he usually is and that's a lot of weight getting there he weighs over 250 pounds and he really packs a wallop when he gets to the ball carrier. Well, on the other side of the football, Missouri will have their hands full defensively, but Larry Smith said this is the best talent he's had since he's been here, but it all begins with a man among boys. Defensive end Justin Smith, number 96. He was the biggest recruiting coup of the Larry Smith era a year ago. He started as a freshman. He played every game as a freshman. So far this year, he's been a little bit frustrated like his teammates have been because they've given up too many points. Look for him tonight to start playing his potential, and once he does, this Missouri defense will really start to gel. Absolutely. Now, this is the first time since 1974 these two teams have met in the conference opener. That was also the last time the field in its 73-year history has seen its share of memorable games and players, and the Missouri-Nebraska rivalry very much a part of its history. Great coaches and players have walked the sideline, like namesake Don Ferro, Dan Devine, and Nebraska icon Bob Devaney. Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Rogers played in the rivalry. And the president was also involved in its history. But the most famous Nebraska-Missouri game involved Tom Osborne. Two years ago, the catch by Nebraska's Matt Davison. It was in the end zone on the north side, and that is where Eric Clemens is nearby now. Eric? Ron, I am near that famous north end zone. Infamous if you're a Missouri fan. Matt Davison made that fateful catch between the O and the U in that end zone. Since that time, however, Nebraska scored 90 touchdowns in 20 games. The only 13 of those touchdowns, however, have come via the pass. Frank Solich told us earlier, I'll take 90 touchdowns in 20 games any time. However, we have to be more multiple against a very physical Missouri team in this contest tonight. We'll be keeping up with the Nebraska pass and rush ratio 
details throughout the game. Ron, back to you. All right, Eric, there is 55-year-old Frank Solich, only the third head coach in Nebraska history since 1962, and already the keys for Coach Solich. The number one key for the Nebraska University tonight is no turnovers. They got to take care of the ball. Last week against Southern Miss, they turned it over five times. The second thing, their defense has got to maintain its intensity. Right now, they're just being brilliant. They got to keep it up. Lastly, the punt and kickoff returns. Nebraska's got great return games. They got to utilize it tonight. And on the other side of the football, 60-year-old Larry Smith calls this a big challenge this year. A lot of talent, not much experience, his key. First down. He's got to make positive yardage on first down. Five or six yards so Nebraska doesn't tee off and get after the passer on second and third and long. Secondly, they got to control the quarterback. Crouch is a great quarterback. He cannot have a big game against his Missouri defense. And lastly, their punt protection and their punt coverage. It was horrible two weeks ago against Alabama Birmingham. They had two punts blocked. They got to protect their punters tonight. Well, Nebraska won the toss, and they have deferred to the second half. You can see part of the sellout crowd of over 67,000. They have had this date on the calendar circled since two years ago in the immaculate reception number two by Matt Davidson. Dan Haydenfeld kicks it away to Ricardo Rhodes and Travis Garvin. And it is Rhodes gets away. Still on his feet. Talked about field position, specialty teams. That is a big key as we start the ball game. And the Missouri offense, number 13 in the NCAA overall. Jim Doherty will be starting a quarterback. The sophomore will play the first two or three series. Then Kirk Farmer will take over. This is a two quarterback system, and we will see both players tonight. Both are about the same as far as talent. Not much drop off. Farmer behind All-American candidate Rob Reedy, number 76 at center. I formation, Nebraska, everybody but one up toward the line. Doherty will put it up over the middle. The pass is incomplete. Intended for Dwayne Blakely, the big tight end. And the Missouri offensive line is led by Rob Reedy right in the middle. He could be the best center in all of college football. And the man at tight end that we just saw drop the pass, tight end Dwayne Blakely, he could be the best since our man, Kellen Winslow. A lot of comparisons with Winslow and also with Alonzo Mays, former Oklahoma Stater. Second and 10, West and Black in the eye formation. And it is Black. Nothing doing. He will lose two on the play by that Nebraska defense, which is number nine in the NCAA in total defense. And let's take a look at the men in red and white. Kyle Vandenbosch will be playing right at the right defensive end. He is a junior at the linebacker spot. Julius Jackson had two defensive touchdowns last week. And in the secondary, Ralph Brown has started every game since coming to Nebraska. This is his 43rd consecutive start. Now these are situations Missouri did not want to be in third and one. Watch Nebraska now get after the passer. Third down and 12. Nebraska rushing five and Doherty is going to be tied up at the 35. Tony Ortiz with his second sack of the year. Nebraska's first of the ball game and Missouri will have to kick it away. Ortiz came on a delayed blitz that time. Nobody from Missouri picked him up. Thus, he had a clean path right to the quarterback. One good thing is that Missouri has been able to not turn the ball over on the first series, but they've got to kick into this win, which is blowing right to left. This is a huge part of the game, the Missouri punt team. They did not punt one time a week ago against Western Michigan, but they had two blocked two weeks ago. And it is a bad snap. Gilpin has to track it down. He kicks it out of the end zone. And a penalty flag is also thrown. That is a safety. Boy, oh boy, Larry Smith's team have been snake bit the last couple of years in the special teams. Well, this is just a bad snap. When we're talking about punt team, we're talking about everything. The punt just goes right over his head. The snap just goes right over his head. Now, he did, couldn't fall on it, so he throws it out of the end zone for a safety. I think that was a good heads-up play. 
Well, Doherty's going to have to get on the headset, see what is going wrong. Nebraska defense very bonded, and even Larry Smith told us yesterday, Artie, that yes, we've been very successful on offense, especially last week against Western Michigan, but he said we haven't played a Big 12 defense yet. Right, but you know, Ron, you got to be able to punt the football, and yeah. that's an offensive play. They were concerned about it. They've worked hard on it, but that time the snapper, Ben Davidson, just let the ball sail a little bit too far over the punter's head. Now, this is going to be a little demoralizing for yeah. Missouri because it's something that they harped on all week long in preparation. they got to shake it off, though. And they will have to kick off to Nebraska. Nebraska, the number seven team in the NCAA in kickoff returns. They are very, very good. What a way to begin for Larry Smith. And he, he knows that every special team he has tonight will be important. But we were at practice on Thursday. They practiced an hour, hour and 15 minutes on punts, kickoff returns, kickoffs, field goals, extra points. So it's not like he doesn't spend time on it. He spends time on it, but we're going to talk during the broadcast just how hard it is not only to coach, but to be successful on special teams, especially early in the year. Well, Randy Stella, number 34, normally a linebacker, back to receive the kick along with number 25, Joe Walker. That shows you the type of depth that Nebraska has. Gilpin kicks it away. It's a short kick. Nebraska, a little bit of confusion, but they will get great field position up to the 38-yard line. And Larry Smith knows that special teams will have an important part in this evening's ball game. I think it would be a major factor. It could very well come down to a, a kick. It could come down to a, a, um, a return, a block kick, whatever it may be. That could be the final uh, deciding factor in this game. I think that uh, those special teams players, and I've told our guys this, every one that goes on the field is going to be a very important person come Saturday night because they could determine the outcome of the game. He was looking into his crystal ball. High formation, first and ten for Nebraska, their first possession. Crouch's first pass is complete to Davison. He has running room. Crosses the 40 down to the 38-yard line. Matt Davison, the junior out of Tecumseh, Nebraska. And, of course, the quarterback for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, the sophomore out of Omaha, Eric Crouch, making just his second start of the season. Of course, Bobby Newcomb started the first couple of football games, and last week they decided to make the change, put Newcomb at that wingback spot. Crouch says the butterflies are gone now that he knows he's the starter. First and ten for the Huskers. Fumble, but Nebraska retains it. Dominic Rayola is the center, the sophomore out of Honolulu, Hawaii. As we take a look at the Nebraska offensive line, Dominic Rayola, just a sophomore. He looks to anchor that line, and of course, running back and wide receivers, the man we saw catch the pass, Matt Davison, led the team in receptions in 98. Had the miracle catch in 97, and believe it or not, that is his only career touchdown reception at Nebraska. Loss of two on the play, second and 12. Dan Alexander, the lone setback. And it is Bobby Newcomb, left side, down to the 30. Carlos Posey coming up from that H-back spot to make the stop. And we have a penalty flag thrown right at the 38-yard line. We'll wait and see what happens to that. Newcomb gets up gingerly. That might be holding that time on a Nebraska wideout. I believe it was number eight, John Gibson, held the defensive back. And that's what happens when you stalk block sometimes. Receiver gets up into a defensive back and sometimes hold them. It's number nine, Wilson Thomas. You're going to see him right here up top grab onto the defensive back that can't see the number and just hold him. You can't do that in the open field. Now, Thomas is a young player. He's only a freshman. Last week was the first time he's played in a major college game. So he's just got to get used to the rules and keeping those hands inside. Nebraska yet to have a 100-yard rusher this year. They have tried to be a little more balanced this season, and they've been successful at that. Second down and 17. Crouch has time, rolls out, tucks it. Still on his feet. Gets up to the 45-yard line before Jeff Marriott and Pat Mingucci, number 77, come up with a stop. 
Frank Solich talked about throwing the ball early, and so far he has. And the Missouri defense, led by Jeff Marriott, the nose guard, third team all conference in the Big uh, 12 last year. Barry Odom, the senior out of Ada, Oklahoma, is the leader on defense, also third team Big 12. And in the secondary, Clarence Jones, a strong safety. He is untested as just a sophomore. Coaches have challenged him for today's game. Third and long. Crouch sees some pressure, swings it out right side to Alexander, and he is going to be dropped. Andre Roberson, the junior out of Houston, Texas, comes up with a nice defensive play. Now, Alexander weighs 245 pounds. Roberson weighs about 165 pounds. That was an excellent open field tackle by the little corner out of Houston. And Nebraska will be forced to punt. Dan Hadenfeld, the senior out of Des Moines, Iowa has had an excellent year so far. Great hang time, averaging just a shade under 49 yards a kick. Missouri has had much success on punt returns. They've already blocked one for a touchdown. Fair catch is being called for. And it'll bounce into the end zone, and Missouri will begin first and 10 from their own 20. Trailing two to nothing. Missouri with the football. Never. And by CDW. CDW, computing solutions built for business. And those are the fountains out front of the Divine Hall, named after, of course, former coach Dan Devine. Along with Artie Gigantino and Eric Clemens, I'm Ron Thulin, welcoming you back to a sold-out for row field. In case you just joined us, Missouri has already been touched for a safety. 2-0, Nebraska leads as a snap on a punt, went over the head of the punter, out of the end zone. That's where we stand right now. Jim Doherty remains a quarterback. The sophomore from Edwardsville, Illinois, T.J. Leon, Leon and Zane Gilmore in the backfield. They will be alternating a lot of people. The option to Gilmore. Left side finds his way up to about the 24-yard line. Keo Craver on the stop. Gilmore and Black will alternate at that tailback spot. They are completely different runners. Yeah, Devon Black, number 22, started the game. It's more of a north and south type runner. Gilmore is more of a shifty, east-west, take it to the house, faster type runner. It's a good compliment or a good compliment to each other. At second and six, Doherty out of the flat. The pass is complete to Kareem Wise. The senior out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. You know, when you think about Missouri's offense, you think about Corby Jones. Three and a half years, he was the starter here. Now he's playing up in the Canadian League. But this personality of the offense will not change. They are not a passing offense, and Larry Smith insists this is still a running offense. It is, and Larry Smith's a running coach, and he's a physical coach. And he knows the only way he could contend for the Big 12 title is to run the football at people like Nebraska, especially when the weather gets colder. Ironically, one of the strengths of their offense is their wide receivers, con considering they are a running offense. Doherty has to scramble. And he will be dropped to the 34-yard line by the rover position. Mike Brown, the senior out of Scottsdale, Arizona, one of the two Browns in the secondary. Ralph and Mike Brown, of course, went on a recruiting trip to Southern Cal. They were highly recruited. And, you know, Mike Brown calls him up and says, Ralph, I'm going to Nebraska. How about you? Well, these two guys, and Mike Brown is one of them, lead this Nebraska secondary, which I believe is the best secondary in all of college football. And one of their players, Erwin Sweeney, has been injured, and he's been a two-year starter. Second and eight for the Tigers. Leon and Gilmore in the backfield. It is Gilmore. The right side, nothing doing. Wrapped up by Tony Ortiz, the senior out of the Bronx, New York. This Nebraska defense attacks the running game. You'll see the linebackers are lined up about three yards off the line of scrimmage, and they attack the line of scrimmage. Watch this now. Watch Polk, number 13. He's going to get up in there. 37 Ortiz comes into your camera. They attack the runner as the runner gets near the line of scrimmage. This is why they are so good against the run year in and year out. Their attacking style of their linebackers. Third down, we'll call it six. The pitch back to Gilmore. Oh, 
great job by the Nebraska right side of their defense and again it is Mike Brown. He is one of the best tacklers in all the college football and he showed it on that play already. Mike Brown has led this defense in tackling the last two years in terms of numbers of tackles. Watch him right up here. Watch what he does. He's going to see the play and he's going to come like a heat seeking missile into the backfield and tackle it for no gain. That is a great safety play that time by Mike Brown out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Well, Missouri will try this punt thing again. Joe <laughs> Walker standing on the 25. Ben Davidson was the snapper. Jared Gilpin will kick it away. The alternate punter is also with Vince Sebo. Gilpin has had the better hang time. Again over the head. Running for his life. Gilpin looking to get rid of it. And Garrow Yepremian would have been proud. My goodness. Well, what's Larry Smith telling his punter now, Harvey? Well, what he's got to do, he's got to settle his snapper down. And I think Larry should do is maybe get his snapper right here, Ben Davidson, on the sidelines and take a couple practice snaps before he goes out. Now, Larry's trying to console him there. You're going to watch old Davidson just gets a little bit too much air underneath the ball. Snapping is a very difficult skill to master. And he hasn't done it in his first two snaps. Davidson has been recently put on scholarship. Nebraska with a football right up the middle crouch. He is such a dangerous runner. You know, you talk about the speed of Bobby Newcomb as Ben Davidson tries to shake it off. Still a lot of football left to be played, 62. But Eric Crouch is so explosive. Well, he's fast and he was second in the hundred when he was in high school in the state of Nebraska. First down and 10 inside of 740 to play here in the first two nothing Nebraska on top. They keep it on the ground. Dan Alexander the junior out of Wentzville Missouri. Coaches are so pleased with this young man's comeback. He's come back from two major surgeries. Nobody really expected him to even play again let alone start. We asked the coaches last night, is he the Nebraska eye back? And they said, absolutely. Well, he's, he combined strength, conditioning, and speed for that man, Frank Solich, who's the lifter of the year as a freshman, which was unheard of prior to him in this Nebraska football program. On second and seven, the pitch to Alexander, still on his feet. Nothing doing. We'll get back to the line of scrimmage. Now, for a Dr. Pepper game break, let's send it to our college football Saturday studios. That's a surprise. Back to the game, though. Oh, boy. That's nice it. and close. Third down and long now. Brown straight drop. Left flat. Good enough for the first down and then some. Complete to Sean Applegate, the senior out of Lincoln, Nebraska. That is his second catch of the year. His first was for a touchdown. Good protection, though, by that Nebraska offensive line. Nebraska's been known for offensive linemen on the run blocking, but here they just do an excellent job of keeping the Missouri defenders away from the quarterback. 69, Adam Jolts, the left tackle. Excellent job of moving his feet and using his hands. They are on the seven, and they have a couple of downs to play with. Crouch looking to put it up into the right flat. Touchdown, Nebraska! Matt Davison's first touchdown reception was in that same part of the end zone two years ago. His second touchdown reception is in the same part of the end zone. When you give up big field position plays like the punt snap, touchdowns are easier to get if you're Nebraska. And Larry Smith knows it. he did not want this game to start off this way. And Nebraska on the board, 8 0 with 5.48 to play. The extra point by Josh Brown is good. Eric Crouch in his second start, obviously happy with the results so far. Nebraska leads. And this has been an adventure. 
Well, Doherty that time did not see Spencer, and obviously Spencer didn't see the ball coming. But this happens with young quarterbacks. Sometimes the timing and the communication are off a little bit. I think Missouri's going for it on fourth down because Kirk Farmer, number 14, has checked into the game, the number two quarterback. Well, look for this to either be a pooch punt or a pass out of shotgun. Farmer can pooch punt. Only seven yards back at the line of scrimmage. And that's exactly what he's going to do. A safe play by Missouri, but Nebraska still with pretty decent field position as they're going to mark it out at about the 22-yard line. And we'll step aside with 406 left to play in the first. Nebraska has hit a couple of home runs and they lead 9-0. Peterson and the safety have given Nebraska the lead by nine. Right up the middle, nothing doing. That is an emotional outburst by Missouri, but Eric Clemens on the sideline, they have not had a whole lot of emotional things to be happy about so far. Ron, especially after the second consecutive punt snap by Ben Davidson over the head of the punter, you saw a lot of heads on the Missouri bench hanging just a bit. But Coach Larry Smith consoled Davidson once again. Davidson still on the sideline working with the football now. Everybody's standing up. As I already said earlier, they just have to regroup a little bit, settle down, and rely on what's a good defense to maybe get them the ball back. Guys? All right, Eric, Willie Miller, the fullback, Corral Buckholder now the eye back for Nebraska. On second and 12, Crouch is going to put it up again. He's being rushed. And he is just going to have to throw it away. Smart play, Justin Smith, we saw him, big number 96, putting the pressure on Crouch. We saw this guy's speed on that play. Yeah, we talked about him in the open as a key to this defense, and he has made two spectacular plays on the last two plays. You're going to see him come from the left of your screen and chase down Eric Crouch from behind. Now, that is a big man that they affectionately call Godzilla chasing the quarterback from behind. This guy will be an All-American football player here at Missouri before he goes on into the NFL. He is something special. Third down and long. Crouch with some time into the flat up to the 32-yard line. The officials are going to say it is a catch. And that'll be close to the first down. A great case of finding exactly where the yardage markers are by Matt Davison. It was a good throw that time by Eric Crouch, too. He put that ball right on a dime. Nice velocity. He knew exactly where he was going to throw the entire time. Well, they're going to force him to measure it, and they have to bring the chains from the other side of the football field. Davison thought he was about two or three feet farther, but the officials moved it back, and you can see just how close it is. Well, you'll see the reaction from Larry Smith, who's standing right there by the officials, whether it's a first down or whether it's fourth down. Look at Larry. He's going to take a look. Game of inches. That was close. Well, tomorrow at 11 a.m. First and 10 balls on the 32 for Nebraska. Don't worry about your makeup. Watch the football game. I was talking to Hardy. Now. <laughs> You're going to see Nebraska now substitute a great deal. They play between 15 and 16 offensive players. Sometimes it's two tight ends. Sometimes it's three wide receivers. They substitute more at Nebraska now than they ever have in the past in offensive personnel groups. Well, they don't want to be stagnant offensively. Crouch will run the action. The pitch. The running room. Jumping up ahead is Carell Buckholder, the junior out of Collins, Nebraska. Here's a young man that early in September missed three or four practices. Nobody was sure what his future would be, but he went in, sat down, talked to Frank Solich. They got it ironed out, and he's back on the field. You know, and he's the only tailback at, at Nebraska that survived spring practice. There were a lot of injuries. He's the one back that got through spring practice healthy. He's a talented player, and he's probably the fastest back. You can see the total offense, Missouri only three yards. We knew it would be a problem for him. But stacked up at the line of scrimmage, the Black Shirts of Missouri with a great stop. Missouri's talented on defense. The first two games this year against Alabama, Birmingham, and Western Michigan, they were kind of razzle-dazzle type of offenses. A lot of wide receivers, not a real running game. So this is a test tonight for this team. And so far, they're meeting the challenge, especially in the run game. Now 
they meet the challenge of third and three. Inside of 145 left in the first. Crouch is going to change things up at the line of scrimmage. Keeps it himself. Looks for the sticks. Reaches over. Does he get it? Yes. Julian Jones from the free safety spot tripped him up, but not before Crouch reached out and touched that flag with his six-foot frame. Crouch can run. He's almost a running back playing quarterback. He's fast and he's athletic. Reminds a lot of people of a faster Scott Frost who used to be the Nebraska quarterback. But make no mistake about it, Eric Crouch is an excellent athlete and Missouri has got to control him tonight. Otherwise, they're not going to win this football game. Absolutely. First and ten, ball on the 43 for Nebraska. Moving again. Crouch with some time, going deep, looking for Davison. Davison high in the air, intercepted. Julian Jones. Carlos Posey with the tip. Jones with the interception, his first of the year, and high fives from the box. Nebraska had five turnovers a week ago against Southern Miss, the first one tonight. Now you're going to see Jones and Posey deep, deep. The ball gets tipped up in the air. Davison goes up for it, and Jones comes down with it. That's good competition between wide receivers and defensive backs. That time, the prayer wasn't answered. Frank Solich was concerned about turnovers, and Missouri has a new quarterback. He is number 14, Kirk Farmer, the 6'5 redshirt freshman out of Jefferson City, Missouri. Nebraska showing blitz. Seven men on the line of scrimmage. Farmer with time, looking for his tight end, tucks it and runs. Takes a shot as he gets up to the 27-yard line after a pickup of eight on the play. The offense will not change with Farmer in the game. Both he and Daugherty are identical in terms of what they can do. And that makes it easy for the offensive coaches not to worry about two different game plans. Run the same game plan with no matter what quarterback is in the game. And that's really a blessing when you have a two-quarterback system because if guys have different abilities, Ron, right. then you got to change too much. Well, his father was a quarterback here at Missouri back in 69 and 71. A couple of years. Second down and short. Perfect situation for this Missouri offense and Zane Gilmore able to get the first down. They call him Happy Gilmore. Now Gilmore, an interesting story. The sophomore out of Tampa, Florida, really pronounces his first name Zain, which means beautiful and nice. His middle name is Jabbar, which means huge and powerful I think well, two of four fit yeah he's pretty good you know in 1997 he was Mr. Football in the state of Florida so he's a talented man and the Missouri coaches are excited about his future here carrying the football well he's given the Tigers first and ten Leon and Gilmore in the backfield and Farmer will put it up for the first time and he is picked off Julius Jackson with the interception his third of the year Jackson had two defenses, defensive touchdowns last week. Picks off his third interception of the 99 season. Well, he was a defensive player last week in the Big 12. Now watch him here. He's going to drop back. It's a simple zone coverage, and Farmer just doesn't see him, and he throws the ball right to him. Wow. you got to look down the field a little bit better than that. And that is Farmer's third interception of the year. And you know what? Mike Brown would have caught the pass, too. Mike Brown would have picked it off if Jackson had not stepped in front of him. And there's one happy guy out of Gainesville, Texas, a big play linebacker. Final play of the first quarter. Crouch will keep it. Look out. Goodbye. Touchdown, Nebraska. It's set up by that man. Crouch takes it the final 31 yards on the final play of the first quarter. Crouch gets outside, but number 15, Willie Mill, right here, makes the key buck. That's great blocking in the alley by the fullback. You got to stay on your feet to stop option football, and that time Willie Miller makes the key chop block in the alley. 
Josh Brown with the conversion, and it is good. Willie Miller doing his best Joel Makovica impression. Crouch gets his sixth rushing touchdown of the year, and as we end the first quarter, Nebraska leads it 16-0. We'll be back. Good, and they've been tailgating since about last year at this time, I think. <laughs> And we are inside of Faroe Field along with Artie Gigantino and Eric Clemens. I'm Ron Thulin. It is a bowl-like atmosphere, over 67,000, a standing room only crowd. And right now, number six, Nebraska has jumped out to the 16-0 lead as we begin play in quarter number two. And those 16 points are a little bit misleading because they've all been set up by field position. Right now, Nebraska's operating on a short field. Ricardo Rose, Travis Garvin. Kick will go deep into the end zone. Rose is going to take a knee, and rightly so. Now the special teams have made a couple of blunders for the Tigers, and it has cost them dearly. Well, snap number one goes over the punter's head, and it ends up being a safety. Snap number two goes over the punter's head, and all it does is give Nebraska sensational field position, which they end up capitalizing on. Field position is a result of big plays and negative plays in the kicking game. Now Kirk Farmer returns to the lineup as the quarterback. He said he feels good about coming off the bench because he gets two or three series to see what Nebraska is doing from a different point of view, and he doesn't mind coming off. Farmer with a five-step drop, rifles it, didn't hit the cutoff man. But this Nebraska defense is so good, they're in the top ten in four different categories, and Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator of Nebraska, says, I like these guys. They remind me of the Georgia Junkyard Dogs. Well, they're all smart. They're all athletic, and they all can run. And they know Charlie McBride's system because they've all been here since their freshman year. Most of them have redshirted. Guys like Polk, number 13, backed up Jay Foreman for two years. He's ready and eager to get a starting role. He's taking advantage of it. Jim Lehman in motion for the Tigers. Keep it on the ground straight ahead. Nothing to it. Devon Black. And there is Charlie McBride, who is considered one of the finest defensive coaches in all of college football. He's been in Nebraska for 23 years. He helps coach the defensive line. He is, in a lot of ways, a genius because he doesn't try to be too complicated. He's kind of an old-fashioned, old-school coach, but he knows exactly what to do to take away an offensive strength. He's as good as there is. Now look at this field position here. Nebraska starting on their own 39-yard line. Missouri on their own 25. Missouri will try the right side. Devon Black trips his way up. Be short of the first down. Mike Brown on the stop. I think Charlie's greatest comment to us the other day was, this defense is so good, I haven't blown up at him yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. I said, Charlie, it's a lot of football left to be played. Well, we'll try this punt thing again. Charlie McBride's defense doing the job once again. And it again is Jared Gilpin. Snapping is very difficult. That's why some guys make National Football League teams, because they can snap. It's a hard skill to perfect. As we look at Ben Davidson, the snapper, number 62. Nebraska said they would go after the punts, and they look like it right now with seven on the line. Here they come. Gilpin, excellent hang time, and the crowd loves it. Joe Walker at his 22. Spins to his right. Nothing doing. Excellent job by the special teams. A 51-yard punt, but more importantly, Gilpin had a hang time of better than 4.4, and that man had a great snap. Well, he had to settle down. Like I keep saying, it's not easy, especially when you got a 300-pound nose guard breathing over you. Boy, that's a tough thing to do. We'll step aside. Nebraska leads. We're in the second. Nebraska going for their 100th win in the 90s. They will be the first D1 team to do it in back-to-back -back decades. And right now, they have a 16-0 lead. We are in the second quarter. Frank Solich in his second year coming off a season 9-4. A lot of injuries last year. Undefeated at 3-0 this season. High formation, it is Alexander. Ball is loose. Missouri says they have it. Let's see. Yes, the Tigers have it. That is the 12th fumble by Nebraska this year, the seventh time they have lost it. Justin Smith with the recovery. And we asked Frank Solich, what is it? You have more fumbles now than you've had ever. 
Well, sometimes it's like a disease. You just can't get rid of it, and you don't know the reason. But I know one thing, that this could be a huge factor Absolutely. in some change in momentum here in this football game. You're going to see the handoff inside, and ball gets loose in. Boy, there's a big pile there, but somebody comes up with it from the University of Missouri, and I believe it was Justin Smith. Yeah. Now Missouri with some excellent field position. Ball at the 31-yard line. Nebraska stacking the line of scrimmage, and they are able to stop Devon Black. We have seen so many teams already going to two quarterback systems. Larry Smith, back in July, he told us, you know, I'd rather stick with one guy. Now he's not so sure. He's called Bobby Bowden, Steve Spurrier, Dick Tomey. And he's talked about it, but it's no big deal now to him. Well, because both players are very similar. They're both young. They're both still learning. They even look alike. But this man is a good football coach, Larry Smith, and he would not have done it if he didn't feel, number one, it was workable, and two, it was best for this football team. Well, Jim Doherty is now back in at quarterback. Play action being rushed. Dumps it off in the flat, and the pass is dropped. Jerome Bolo hit him right in the chest. Now for our national car rental game summary, let's send it down to Eric Clemens. Well, as you guys talked about, it's a game of mistakes, and Nebraska has taken advantage of them. Matt Davidson, three catches, 44 yards, and a touchdown, no deflection necessary. Eric Crouch, their most dangerous offensive player, according to the, the Missouri defensive coaches, five carries, 47 yards. And look at the rushing and passing for Nebraska. We told you we'd keep up with it pretty even so far in the game, guys. Exactly what they wanted to do offensively. Right, and what's even, they've called about the same amount of runs and passes. Third down and nine. Missouri with a golden opportunity. Doherty scrambling. Close to pass interference. It is not called. Pass is incomplete. Intended for Dwayne Blakely, the big tight end. And Keo Craver was close, and he might have hit him before, but it was a good defensive play that was very, very close to being pass interference. You're going to see Craver come from behind, number three, and yeah. that's very, very close on Blakely. But you look here, and you say Blakely is the go-to guy in that situation, and the crowd reacts because they just saw that wow. play on the jumbotron here. Well, that man did not throw a flag, and neither did his counterparts. So it wasn't a penalty. It was not a penalty. So at, spotted at the 37-yard line, they will attempt the field goal. Brad Hammerick. His longest is 48. This is 47. He has the distance, and it is good. He is four for four on field goals in 1999, and Missouri has gotten down to the board. 16 to 3 is our score. Just over 12 minutes left in the second. Beautiful day in Columbia, Missouri, and it is a beautiful evening. Perfect for college football. Capacity crowd of over 67,000 on hand. And right now, Missouri has finally gotten on the board 16 to 3. They had to come away with something on that possession. Yeah, mentally, it just puts them back into the game. And I, I really think in that first quarter, it was just a young football team being a little nervous and being a lot hyped up. And we know the center, Ben Davidson, was really too hyped up. But they're all settling down now. is the 25 penalty flag is thrown. Well, Randy Stull, I should say. Penalty flag is thrown. And we'll have to wait and see. It probably is against Nebraska. Missouri coming over to talk to our referee. It is again, it is excuse me Ryan it is against yep. Nebraska a couple of the Missouri defenders there are pointing back the Nebraska way but you know holding it, it, on the return team fifth yard penalty first down because of the angles that players get put in when they're covering kicks and they're blocking there's holding there's blocking from behind there's there's clipping on almost every return in the NFL and in college football I think it's something they ought to really consider changing the rules on. Because these are devastating penalties because they really can back an offense up and you can lose 15 to 20 yards of field position. Well, Nebraska now is backed up. 
And we have a clock problem. It looks like the big clock, and on the uh, on the big clock, there is nothing showing. I got a watch. I'll keep it. So the officials have to run over to the near sideline to talk about it. Frank Solich, as uh, Missouri goes on defense. This has been a very difficult week for the Missouri Tiger defense, starting really last week. Frank Solich has had his problems, but that Missouri defense also with theirs is their defensive coordinator, Mo Ankney. Wife passed away last week, fought cancer for 15 months, showed up at the game Saturday and coached it, said his wife told him he had to, even though she had passed away. We talked to him yesterday, and we agree with Larry Smith. This is a tougher man than any football player you and I have ever met. And it was almost coming to the game was therapeutic for him to get his mind off of the tragedy and into the game. But Mo, Mo is one of the class people in college football, and our, our, our best goes out to him and his family in a, in a tough time in his life. He means so much to these players, and he is a wonderful man. And he, he, do go out to he, he was with Larry in Arizona and, and did a great job with that Arizona defense over a decade ago uh, for Larry Smith. Well, Eric Crouch has tasted success so far this evening. He has run for a touchdown. He has thrown for a touchdown. The clock is still off, so they're going to have to keep the time on the field. One clock, however, is working, we can see, in one end zone. And Larry Smith will have to look to his right to find out how much time. Nebraska, first and ten, ball on the 13-yard line. Crouch is going to keep it, has some running room. Into the secondary, up to the 27 for a Dr. Pepper game break. Here is Kevin Frazier with our upset of the day. Amazing. They just got waxed early in the year <laughs> by Texas, but they, they've thrown that game away, and now they've come back and won three straight. Crouch looking to pass over the middle, has a man open, and is incomplete. Intended for Bobby Newcomb, and he is down for the count. Julian Jones, the junior out of Midwest City, Oklahoma. They call him quietly strong. Nothing quiet about that hit by Jones. Well, you know what happens? The ball is in the air a little bit too long, and Newcomb has got to go up for it, and he leaves himself vulnerable. And Jones just comes over and says, hey, Bobby, don't come down here again. <laughs> I, I, that's what safeties do. Uh, you know, there's been some great safeties in college yeah. football, but they're all those hitters inside. And ironically, Bobby Newcomb talked to former Husker quarterback Tommy Frazier, among others, last year about how the hits he's going to take in Nebraska will affect him. Here he gets one as a, as a wingback. On second down. Up the middle, a little bit of running room before Pat Duffy, the junior out of California. We have another penalty flag thrown. The option offense works when the quarterback can generate yards. This year, Nebraska's offense has become a little bit more of a quarterback offense in terms of the option. Everybody's down on the Nebraska tailbacks, but it, a lot of it's because they haven't gotten the opportunity, especially on the options. Randy Kristall, our referee. He looks like he can play tight end, doesn't he? Face mask, it's a five-yard penalty and fishing for a first down. I've always felt there are more face penalties against option teams because the quarterback's running and guys are running and reaching out because they're thinking the ball is going to be pitched. Quarterbacks in option football cause face mask penalties. Go back to the old days in Oklahoma. You were there for right. a lot of those games. It happens a lot in option football. Now first and ten for Nebraska. Just over 11 minutes left. Another penalty flag is thrown into the pack of players, and it looks like it might be holding. Crouch just had to sit on it. Nebraska did not want to be predictable offensively, and I think we've seen through the numbers that they haven't been thus far, and it is holding against the Huskers. Well, last season, they if you can say dropped to sixth in the NCAA in rushing and you can see this year 193.3 and they averaged over 300 yards in the 90s. That, that is just absolutely amazing. That is their lowest average 
last year since their last year's average the lowest since 1976 when they really were a passing team. Well you know this year and, and it's been a, it was a little bit of a problem last year. They are not generating as many big plays. In fact this year they've only had two runs of over 25 yards. And you need to get those big chunks to, to get the three and 400 yards. And right now they're not doing it. Now coaches still believe they could be a very good offense. They're behind a massive offensive line as usual. First down in a bundle, we'll call it 23. Crouch looking a little hook pattern, overthrown, intended for Davison. Coverage put on by Carlos Posey. You know, we talked about Mo Ankeny, but from a football standpoint, he was very, very nervous about his quarterbacks and also his safeties coming into this football game. It's because they haven't played very much, and quite frankly, they got exposed a little bit in those first two games. But I go back to what I said before, Ron, is part of the problem Missouri had on defense in those first two games was the style of Alabama Birmingham right. and Western Michigan. They'd have four receivers on one side, and then they'd line up with three tight ends in the backfield on the next time. So it was all kinds of different stuff. And I bet you don't get a feel for your defensive football team from a physical standpoint when you're playing the razzle-dazzle stuff. Well, Nebraska wants to call a timeout as they're facing second and long, second and 23, and Eric Crouch wants to talk about it with Frank Solich, who, like Tom Osborne, calls all the plays. 10.51 left to play. In deciding the Pac-10 champion. And I tell you, Mike Bellotti has just done an outstanding job at the University of Oregon. Doesn't every game this year could have an impact yeah. on the Pac-10 standings? I know, wow. After what we've seen, it's been a crazy year, and we've talked to numerous coaches about it, and the word parody keeps coming up. Uh, it is parody, and it's... That's our, a produ our producer, Mike Helling, by the way, <laughs> and he does have that pipe in his mouth with the Argyle Sox in our truck right now. <laughs> Who was that? Who was that? I have no idea. Hopefully it's that young man's dad. Second down and long and 67,000 are standing. Crouch is going to be dropped. First sack of the evening and it is about the guy already talked about at the top of the show, Justin Smith. What makes the sack though is the coverage downfield. Missouri does a great job. Watch these guys back here. Watch that. They do an excellent job of blanketing in man and free safety the Nebraska receive. There is nowhere to throw. Nowhere to throw the football in there. As a result, Justin Smith turns it loose and makes the sack. That's a covered sack. And we have a whistle. And I think it's a substitution penalty because the penalty flag was thrown on the far side and it may be against Nebraska. They may move them back even farther. They're already at third and 31. We've seen this penalty numerous Dead times ball. this year. Substitution infraction by be a five yard penalty. Let's go back to Justin Smith. We saw him make that great uh, sack. Here's a guy that coaches told us he's not playing great football right now. Well, for him. Well, you know, he's only a sophomore. And he, he was, you know, he played as a freshman last year. And it takes time to get used to playing games. This is only what? His 14th or 15th yeah. game. But watch him here now. He'll get after the passer. He's lined up as a left defensive end. They need to get to St. Louis for the first down. Right up the middle. Some running room up to the 30 to the 35-yard line. Almost back to the original line of scrimmage. Corel Buckholder. The, on the carry. The defensive linemen are in pass rush mode. Now watch Smith come up the field. Oh my goodness, it's a handoff inside. But he was thinking pass. He's not there to stop the run. He's there to rush the passer and react to the run. The coaches will not be mad at him for that because no. Nebraska's got a punt. I'm really impressed with Justin Smith. He, he's going to be a big time player here for Larry Smith. Pickup of about 21 on the play, but they still face fourth down and 12. Good snap. Nice high kick. Artie Johnson waiting at his 10. Has some running room. Penalty flag is thrown. This may be for now. And he is going to be shoved out of bounds at the 45 yard line by the punter, Dan Haydenfeld. But we have some laundry laying down at the 10 yard line. Artie Johnson, that is his second return of the year. 45 yards, but they're going to walk it back. 
He's only 5'6", but he's got some big-time quicks. And when he caught that football, he accelerated mm -hmm. up the football field, which is what a good punt returner does. Again, I talked about it before, but penalties on the kick Play. in the kicking game. Illegal block in the back during the return. Holding during the return. The obvious penalty will be the illegal block on the back. back. That is the obvious penalty. Programming note this Tuesday at 8 o'clock on Fox Sports Net. It's hardcore football. This week's guest is angles in the kicking game. It's difficult for blockers to get under control and block coverage men without holding them or getting caught behind them. And that's what happened that time. Uh, Nebraska with their back to the wall inside of nine minutes to play in the first half. Ball is spotted at the five yard line, first and ten. Give it to the first man through the fullback, TJ Leon, the redshirt freshman out of Norman, Oklahoma. The date that he has circled on his calendar for old TJ and his family is the game against the Oklahoma Sooners. He told us he didn't even get a courtesy call for the Oklahoma uh, Sooners during the recruiting process. Well, but that's but he's come here and he's done a great job of making a name for himself here in Columbia. He's got a 19-inch neck. Did you know that? He can't buy shirts. I know. He's got to get everything tailored. Wow, big neck. Gordy still in the ball game. The pass is complete at the eight-yard line by Eric Spencer, the sophomore out of Houston, Texas. We saw a little bit of Jim Doherty's arm on that play. Yeah, it was a timing route. It's three steps. He gets the ball. One, two, three. It's a 90, and it's an out to the right side. Good throw, good delivery. Of course, Jim's dad is, was his high school football coach. And his dad played at Arizona State. Was a quarterback at Arizona State for Frank Cush. You read about this young man, the word that comes to mind is survivor. And he also makes people around him so much better. But it is third down and about six for the Tigers. They keep it on the ground, try that left side, short of the first down will be Gilmore. That was the right call there because what you don't want to do, because Nebraska blitz that time, is give up the ball in a blitzing situation where someone might come off the corner and knock the ball loose. And once again, Missouri will be forced to kick it away. Joe Walker standing on his 42-yard line. This is where you hope your center's got that snap down. Walker, still punting. Walker's one of the premier kick return players in the in college football. Not only on punts, but on kickoff returns. Well, last week was his first game back since the torn ACL prior to the bowl game last year. This is a line drive kick. Walker and everybody else just going to let it bounce because the Huskers will get excellent field position. Ball stopped at the 46-yard line. The punt goes for 40. And we'll take a timeout. 6.44 left to play in the first half. Nebraska struck early, but it is a 16-3 ball game. On Halftime Report, Kellen Winslow and I will have scores and highlights from another pond, Arnie and Eric, with the game, guys. Thank you, ladies. Six minutes and 44 seconds left to play in the first half. Artie Gigantino, Eric Clemens, and Ron Thulin coming your way from Columbia, Missouri. The sun has set, but we are starting to really pick up the action here and knocking pads. Crouch play action. Into the flat, the pass is complete. Willie Miller, the junior out of Bellevue, Nebraska. Good touch that time on the football with Eric Crouch getting outside. Now you're going to see 15, Willie Miller sneaking to the flat. But look at the perfection of the pass. That's called passing touch. I'll tell you what's not a touch, though, is tackling a guy like Miller, yeah. who's 250 pounds in the open field. Boy, is he a load. I, I love this guy. He was Joel Makovica's backup a year ago, and he's been hurt off and on in his Nebraska career. But, boy, he looks like a real fullback. He's big. He's tough and he's fast oh. and he's hard to tackle. He's an old time fullback. Yeah. What you think? First down and 10 for Nebraska. Ball at about the 44 yard line of Missouri. Miller and Buckholder in the backfield. Crouch just ducks under the big offensive line. 
maybe picked up two on that play. Let's talk about that offensive line for a moment, Artie. The big offensive line. Here's here are guys that stayed together this summer. They added weight. They cut down 10% of their body fat. And the one goal they had, let's get back to rushing the football like we did two, three years ago. Well, the offensive line is synonymous with Nebraska running the football. And, and I'll tell you, they, sometimes the offensive linemen get criticized, and it's really not their fault. I don't think it's been as big a problem as some people have made it out to be, that they're not playing good. The Nebraska system allows and helps these offensive linemen to play good. Now, they average six foot four, weigh an average of 300 pounds. They all look the same. Uh -huh. When I was out here in practice last night, you can't tell any of them apart. <laughs> they have all short hair. They all are nice guys. They're all intelligent, but they all look the same. They have like a cookie cutter there at Nebraska. You know, they put out they put out offensive linemen. And Milt, Milt Teneper, the offensive line coach, just does a brilliant job of coaching them. Well, Nebraska is called a timeout with 541, but Sunday it's for changed linebacker play Absolutely. in the National Football League by his ability to rush the passer, period. Bill Parcells was brilliant at utilizing him, but he changed the, the, the face of, of National Football League pass rushing. On second and nine, they pitch it back. Buckholder looking for some running room inside the 40, trips his way up to the 35-yard line. Carlos Posey coming up from that H-back spot. The corners of Missouri playing a little interesting style tonight. Well, they get, everybody gets caught inside in this one. It was a stunt, but he got to get up and get some run support. As we saw Clarence Jones, number eight, get knocked down and roll into your pitcher. There was no run support that time in the left of the Missouri defense. Well, of course, they want Clarence Jones to have that from that strong safety spot. They're still looking for their leader on defense as they face third down. We'll call it two. The pitch. Buckholder, left side, he gets the first down, a couple to spare, Justin Smith coming from the opposite side to make the spot. Well, we talked about Clarence Jones, the sophomore, he has to provide that run support. Well, watch him right here, he's playing strong safety, he thinks the ball's going outside, it comes back inside. Buckholder did a great job that time of starting to the outside, but then turning it up inside, which is why Jones started outside, had to stop and come back. Clarence Jones is a key ingredient tonight to this Missouri run defense. He's the eighth guy, the ninth guy at the line of scrimmage. First and ten, Nebraska on the roll. The pitch to Buckholder. Inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line. Andre Roberson made the first hit. Justin Smith completed it. Missouri's starting to take Crouch out of this game. Every time he's running an option now, they're hitting him and making him pitch the football and allow their secondary to rally to the pitch. When you stop the option, you start with the fullback, you stop. Secondly, you go to the quarterback. Third, you go to the pitch. You can see that it's taken away inside, and they bring Buckholder. Buckholder comes back inside. He breaks a tackle. But that's what you want on defense. Let him pitch the ball and go run it down. High-risk offense for Nebraska. Look right, throw left, pass is complete to number three, Matt Davison. Spins his way to the 20, down to about the 18-yard line. That will be good for another first down. Roberson again on the tackle. Matt Duffy put a little pressure on the QB. Big time. You're going to see him come off the corner here, and he just levels over Crouch, and he almost causes an injury right there. Eric Crouch, very cool under heavy fire there, just getting that football off. And that wasn't a blown blocking assignment. No. You know, that was something you let the blitzing linebacker come, and you say you're going to get rid of the ball before he gets there. On first and 10, Nebraska inside the red zone. Banging his way to the 15 again, Buck Calder, Jamonte Robinson. Sophomore out of St. Petersburg, Florida on the stop. Boy, this has to be a big defensive series for Nebraska, or for Missouri, we should say, with inside of three minutes left to play in the half. You don't want Nebraska scoring. That would continue to give them momentum. A stop would be just absolutely monumental for this Missouri defense. First man through, again, it is Miller. Fighting his way, keeps the legs moving, may have gotten down to about the 12-yard line. 
But what we're seeing here is vintage Nebraska football. Just rushing the football. We're going to line it up. We're going to smack you upside your head. We're going to try to get some yards. And they opened the game trying to throw the ball a little bit more. But now Frank Solich, as the signal caller, is into more of a run rhythm. They're running options. They're running the fullback. But they're also running the power sweep, you know, the pitch play to the tailback to both sides. So it looks like Frank Solich is into a rhythm right now in his play calling. And he should be because the Nebraska offense is executing very well. Third down and a long two. Crouch keeps it. Pitches at the last moment. They're going to mark it out, however, at the 10-yard line. And it looks like it'll be about a foot short of the first down. Prior to that play, Nebraska was averaging about five yards a rush. They had over 110 yards running the football. Now, now if it's fourth down, Frank Solch has got to make a decision. I think he was out of bounds when he caught the pitch. You see Crouch get outside. Now, Frank Solch will tell him when they're watching the tapes tomorrow, he should have kept the football, because he probably would have gotten the first down if he would have kept the football in his hands. Well, Josh Brown's going to try the field goal because it's fourth and about, oh, half a yard. And they're going to call a timeout. Frankie London, the holder, wants to talk about it. Because it's fourth and it is less than a yard. But I think Frank's making a good move here, don't you? Just get the points. Let's go into the locker room at halftime leading. You know, there's two schools of thought. You kick the field goal, you get the points. However, you send a message to your offense, especially your offensive line, if you go for it on fourth down and you make it. You're seeing people in college football go for it now mm -hmm. more and more on fourth down. Just a reminder, coming up at halftime, the former Missouri All-American and probably the greatest tight end in this school's history, and a tight end, Dwayne Blakely, wasn't even born. You know what? I, I, I love Kelvin, but the, Dwayne Blakely might, might you know, <laughs> set, set all kinds of new records as a tight end here because he is an impressive young athlete. You know, Kellen gets the last word tonight. <laughs> no, he no, he doesn't. <laughs> he's, he's probably back here in the Cal uh, annuals right now looking for your picture back in the 70s. <laughs> Let's take a look at that Gigantino guy, huh? Well, the field goal will be marked at the 17. It'll be a 27-yarder. Kick is up and away, and it splits the uprights. So Josh Brown with the field goal, and inside of 155 to play, and Nebraska has up their lead at 19-3. We'll be back. Three Tigers and the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Nebraska leading 19-3, the final minute 53 of the half. And this is Ricardo Rhodes. Up to the 24-yard line, and that is where Missouri will begin once again. We have not seen Farmer a whole lot tonight. I think he was in about a series and a half. Doherty has gone just about the distance, which is interesting. Well, Farmer, when he came in, looked a little rattled, to be honest. When he throws the interception, he just was off target a little bit. And Jerry Byrne told us, hey, I'm going to go with the guy that's got the hot hand as the game goes on. But, you know, playing against these guys is not easy. Absolutely. The black shirts are a great defensive unit, and Larry Smith knows it. Now, Kirk Farmer has checked into the ball game. Final one minute and 46 seconds. Spencer in motion. Farmer keeps it on the ground. Up to the 28-yard line. Devon Black out of St. Louis. He's a young man that... Went to Tennessee State, decided to transfer, had some academic problems, had to sit out a year. Said he came back and he had to convince the coaches that he really wanted to play football and he really didn't get his scholarship back until this year. Well, he hung in there, and I, I think that's the great thing about college athletics. Guys get second chances. He hung in there and he's been rewarded for it. Second down and five. They're just going to keep it on the ground and try to establish some kind of running game. Again, it is black. Well, coming into this game, that's what Larry Smith really wanted to do. He wanted to take Black and Gilmore and run them up inside. Larry Smith is a Big Ten Midwestern type of coach, and he believes in the no-nonsense physical approach to football, offensively and defensively. And the way you're physical is to run the ball right down the defense's throats. Uh, that's easier said than done when you're playing against a good defense like Nebraska. But I know what you said is right, Ron. Yeah. He wants to establish some type of run, 
physical mentality before they go in at halftime. Well, they had over 560 yards, about 560 yards in offense against Western Michigan last week, but Western Michigan is not Nebraska's defense. No, they're last in the country in total defense. And there is vintage Nebraska defense. Nothing doing. Warren Kaiser with a stop, and it was a big one of that. The junior out of Farewell, Nebraska. Missouri only 37 total yards so far in the first half. They lost 35 yards just on bad snaps in the safety. They just went into positive yards rushing the football. They have rushed for three yards. Farmer, a little touch pass right side. Pass is incomplete intended for Kent Lehman. I think the offense right now may have a little bit of confidence problem, wouldn't you? Well, yeah, because they're not moving the football. But again, I, I think what he was doing here, running the football was the right thing. I know the crowd didn't like it, but you want to establish yourself so you come back in the second half and it's in your mind 0-0 zero, zero, and you, you, you play this game. But they can't keep shooting themselves in the foot with special teams because right now you take away nine of Nebraska's points because of special teams blunders. They only have two toes left from shooting themselves in the foot so much tonight. Final 18 seconds. Farmer with the pitch. It is back to Black. Right side. Has some running room. Crosses the 50 in the Nebraska territory. Clint Finley coming up from that free safety spot to make the stop. You, that was the best rushing play they've had. It, it was. And it was an option play. And you think Nebraska would be great against the option because they see it all the time in practice. But they have yet to play against an option football team so far this year. Cal, Iowa, and Southern Miss did not run an option. And Charlie McBride told us yesterday he was nervous a little bit about Missouri's option because his defense hadn't seen one in a game yet. Pick up of 12. Farmer will go into the shotgun. The rush, and he is going to be dropped and bent over backwards, back to the 43-yard line. Steve Warren. <laughs> that, and you talk about an interesting guy. Here's a guy that is 305 pounds. He sings at weddings. That's what he does. It's a part-time job, and he sung the national anthem at a couple of Nebraska basketball games. Now, I dare to say he is the biggest singer in the country <laughs> as far as I know who, who's going to tell him he can't sing and he's from Springfield Missouri so he's fired up to be here tonight timeout's been called with two seconds left in the half and another pro your local listings for the game in your area Larry Smith out of Bowling Green in Ohio from Van Wert Ohio originally Frank Solich born in Pennsylvania Ray spent most of his life in Cleveland Ohio Two seconds left to play in the half. Nebraska leads 19 to three. This will be the old Hail Mary. You're going to see three players lined up to the bottom of the screen here. They're going to throw the ball down the field. There it is. Farmer airs it out. Gets a lot of arm, a lot of white jerseys inside. Almost caught. It was almost a Matt Davis in replay. Kent Lehman almost got the meat hooks on it but that's the way the first half will end let's look at that one more time well that's what happens though when the ball gets tipped in the air defensive coaches are always telling their dbs in those situations to knock the ball down not up you can see here look at all these nebraska guys right there and the ball goes over the top that could have been a touchdown for missouri but it's because the ball was tipped up in the air Look at all those Nebraska guys up in there. Mike Brown, number 21. Wow, that would have been something. Well, that's the way our halftime will end. Nebraska with a lead, 19 to 3. Now with our halftime report, here's Kevin Frazier and Kellen Winslow. Thanks a lot, guys. Welcome to the College Football Saturday Studios in Los Angeles. The Nissan Halftime Report, Kevin Frazier, along with Kellen Winslow, the Missouri alum. <laughs> and so far, things not really good. This is not the start that Larry Smith wanted for this team in this game. And no, it's not. He wanted to have a better job in special teams. You know, last week, they didn't punt the ball at all. Now we know why. It wasn't to their mm -hmm. benefit to punt the football. But the turnovers are killing Missouri. Good field position by Nebraska, and they're taking advantage of it right now. And that's the difference in this ballgame. All right, can they make the comeback? We'll find out later. And then, you know, you look at Eric Crouch, he's coming up the field here. And this is after a Missouri turnover just before the second quarter, and he gets the ball into the end zone. So this is the key in the ballgame for Nebraska, rushing the football.